So the first, the first thing is to, is to observe correctly. Only that way can you possibly get to the right ideas. I don't know of any way to jump to ideas because geology is very strange. Who could invent? Who could invent seafloor spreading? Out of out of what? And of course, every everything other than just raw images interpretation. But there there are things that uh, that you can observe pretty with pretty strong confidence. Other things you really must infer. It's a it's a a minuet. You, you you have to you have to see a gap in knowledge before you can focus in your research. You, you can waste your time on trivial problems if you don't see. Uh, and I would say that if you if you uh, attack problems that are no consequence or attack serious problems in a ineffective or invalid way, just wasting time. So the whole trick is to find a problem that can be attacked and, and, and have the expertise to attack it. There are problems I can't attack, I don't have the expertise for it. So, so you have to target your own research towards something you think is within your capabilities and your competence. What is the legacy that you think you leave to geology? What is the legacy I leave to geology? Uh, I think the the most important thing is has been showing that that sedimentation and tectonics are interwoven. The one handles on one gives you handles on the other. See, when I was a young geologist, uh, there were no specialists in tectonics and sedimentation. They didn't exist. There were people who studied sedimentation. There were people who studied tectonics. What is related to your scientific success? That's an interesting question. I think passion for what I do. Energy, I've always been an energetic person. And uh, the willingness to focus. And to, you know, and take advantage of opportunities. But there should be something else, because there's a lot of energetic people and a lot of positive people that they have that, so there should be something else. Uh, but there, are there people who are energetic with passion and with focus? I don't know. I can't answer that question. All I know is so I just be myself. That's what I can. Yeah. So maybe the contingency of maybe the age the, the, that you leave those years were Oh, that's important. definitely important, yes. The logistics. We, we would the not have had the... We would not have had the, the tools to uh, to understand the relationship of tectonics and sedimentation 25 years earlier. It would have been impossible. So without 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 the appreciation of plate tectonics, you can't get anywhere understanding grand scale of sedimentation. Without being able to pick sedimentary systems apart, as we have been able to do it, understand turbidity currents and streams and so forth. Uh, the tectonics would help. Also, definitely, you know, you just go together on the ladder. Because I was doing it because uh, science is a communal effort. You, you advance together, you don't advance at all. If you if you gain ground, if you don't, if you gain conceptual ground, if you don't impart it to your fellows, it doesn't go anywhere. It dies with you. So science is a is a matter of building bridges and, as well as building towers. And, uh, I've, I've never felt. I've never felt competitive about science in a personal sense. That there are two ways of looking at entities in science. You can you can see them as a substance circumscribed by its boundaries. Sort of imagine that it has an internal motor and that it evolves itself. Or you can see an entity in science as not so separate from other things, but as produced by as a function of interactions of other things. And to me, this was, uh, from my own thinking, this was a critical step to, to see that the Cordilleran origin, which is all of the, the rocks of, of California and Oregon, the, the deformed rocks of the so-called orogenic belt, that uh, they did not uh, evolve by themselves from an internally driven process. They were produced by multiple plate interactions over the years.
you like Kant, the philosopher? Yes, well, I like that, that one statement of his. Dare to know yourself if you see that something is not covered in the scripture. And then have the courage to use your own understanding. It's been like Galileo showed how you do that. You don't, you don't deny what you understand because somebody tells you you must. After all, what, what did science give you? A life. For me, it gave me a life. I can't imagine not having been a scientist. I feel extraordinarily lucky that, that I've been paid. I've been paid to try to figure out how the world works. You can't beat that in my book. <laughs>